Hey, looks like we both made it after all. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot. And this is Tuesday. It is May 9th. Now, what we do on this show is we look at OTC and penny stocks that have potential to make us money. And we're going to do that today, too, with one exception. We're only going to be able to look at one stock. Sorry. I had some situations come up today, and I just didn't have enough time. Well, I did have enough time. I didn't have enough power, electric power. We've got work being done here at the house and the power's been going on and off all through the day and I haven't got all the due diligence done I needed. Not to mention, power just came back on and I don't have a lot of time to even get this video out. But I do have enough time to give you one stock and I have chosen UBX, Unity Biotechnology. Now this is a penny stock on the NASDAQ Keeping in mind, a penny stock is nothing more than a stock under five bucks, and they're on every exchange. Well, I found UBX the same way we find all the stocks we talk about on this show, by looking at the charts first. I wasn't looking at this company's chart, I was just looking at charts, and her chart jumped out at me for two reasons. One, she looks like she's ready for a breakout. She's been climbing and she's right up underneath that 200, which is what we're always looking for. The other thing that caught my attention was on March 17th, she had a huge fall. She went from over $4 to under $2 in one day. Well, I was curious to know why she fell. Are we in recovery right, right now or what's going on? When I came over here, it was interesting to see that a news press came out on March 27th about this company's drug and another one came out April 24th about the same drug. But both of them as far as I could tell, were very good news. On closer examination, it looks like it is very possible that the first news press that caused that tremendous fall was misread, misinterpreted. That's the way I see it, but I'll let you be the judge. So UBX, she finished today at $2.49 and just under 4% gains today. So what is UBX? Well, as you can tell, they're a biotechnology company, an American biotechnology company, that develops drugs that target sentient cells in age-related eye diseases. And their drug is called the UBX1325. And we'll learn more about this looking at the news presses. So what was the relative volume today? Ooh, big drop, bad drop. 647,000 shares down to 179. Is she off people's radar or are they still not understanding what both news presses were saying? Share structure for UBX is good. Outstanding share count is 14.3 million. I did not look this up. I don't know what the float is, but anything under that is good and it can't be over that. So we've got a pretty decent float. Looking at the financials for UBX. Look at that. I wasn't expecting any revenues. She is an R&D, research and development, biotech. They normally need money. They're not making any money because they don't have any products to sell. But here we go. They had a bang up year in 2021 for not selling anything, $4.7 million. Don't forget, we gotta put three zeros behind any of the numbers down here. And 2022, they did about a quarter million dollars. Huge drop here. But what's most interesting, is that that didn't cost them anything for the money they made. I don't know what it's for, maybe consultancy. Doesn't cost anything to do that. Quarterly, they don't have any more money coming in just those two periods and nothing since then. Looking at her disclosures. Oh, we got a new one here. I didn't see this, this just came out obviously, came out today, their 10Q, this is their quarterly financial. Now, I don't expect there to be any revenues in there, but there'll be a lot of information about the company. It's a perfect place to get your history. Forget Google, just jump into a financial. And I'm sure there's a ton of information in there about this drug. I see they also came out with an 8K, and I will guarantee that has to be with the financial. They kind of come out together. So let's jump on over to that news because that's really what it's all about. As I said, two news presses came out. You had one on the 27th of March and one on April 24th. Both are about the same drug, UBX 1325, but they are two separate trials. This is the Envision trial and this is the Behold trial. 
The Envision trial is in phase two, and they are working with patients with wet age-related macular degeneration. The BEHOLD trial is also in phase two, and they are working with patients with diabetic macular edema. And as far as I can see, both phase trials are good from all the information they gave us. But I want to show you where I think it all went bad. So they give us a lot of information here, but they give us the bullets up at the top, you know, the things they really want you to pay attention to, and they're good. Now I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up. This last one here says the company is to share their 48-week Behold DME data in April. And they did. April 24th, that came out. They tell us here that 52% of the people treated with the drug did not require the other drug, the anti-VEGF treatment, through the 24-week trial, which is good. It's working. They don't have to supplement it whatsoever. The drug maintained visual acuity in patients with ongoing active disease through the 24 weeks. Their eyesight stayed better. It was clearing up. And the very last one, which is actually the very first one, right? You open up the news press, that's what's going to be up at the very top. And I think this is where it all went sour. I think people misread this. Read this with me. UBX 1325 monotherapy did not achieve non-inferiority through the 24 weeks due in part to an unexpected 3.5 letter gain in the anti-VEGF control arm. Well, that's not real easy to understand, is it? And actually, when you read it, how does it impress you? The drug did not achieve non-inferiority. Well, you know what? Non-inferiority isn't something we normally say. I don't think it just jumps out. But did not achieve does. And the last word you want to see in a phase trial is did not achieve. Really what they're saying here is it did not achieve poor results. That's a silly way of saying it. They are trying to prove that their drug is efficient. It works better. See, phase one is for safety. Phase two is for efficacy. How well does your drug work? And then phase three is for putting your drug up against your competitor's drugs to see which one of you work better. And their drug is doing excellent. No problems. It did not achieve inferiority. It was superior. Why didn't they just say that? And I think that's why it fell from over four bucks to under two bucks and why it should be coming back. But we have another piece of news which is going to help it because they didn't put that silly sentence in there. Now, I actually had to go and do some more research so I could understand what was going on here. <laughs> what I learned. What they tell us in this news press that came out April 24th, the company is a biotechnology company developing therapeutics to slow, halt, or reverse diseases of aging. Today, they announced positive results for the long term follow-up of the phase 2 behold study of their drug in patients with diabetic macular edema. Now check this out. A single injection of the drug treatment led to a significant improvement in vision lasting for a duration of 48 weeks. Now as I said, I didn't know if that was good or bad. So I went and looked it up. This anti-VEGF treatment is what people have to take who have these diseases. And they literally have to get a needle in the eye. Yes, a needle right in the eye and they put it in there. And they have to get this shot once a month for six months and then they start to decrease over a two to three year period. Imagine that. Now, think of what they're saying. One shot is good for 48 weeks, almost a year. One shot a year. Look, you had me at one. <laughs> they go on to tell us that the drug is the only treatment candidate in the clinical development that targets sentient cells to potentially modify the course of the disease. And this therapeutic approach could redefine the standard of care in DME. Based on the strong emerging clinical profile of UBX1325, we are planning to move forward with our phase two B DME head-to-head -head study against a Aphelibercept in the second half of 2023. I don't know why they don't put a capital on that. This Aflibercept, that is the competing drug. That's the drug most people with this disease use. And they're going to go into a head-to-head -head combat. Now, normally, that's in phase three. Now, they say this is phase 2B. 
So I don't understand how they break down these phases, but they're getting close to phase three and it is all good news. And the bottom line here is, is that big fall. That fall on March 27th was unjustified as far as I can tell. Now I'm not a doctor. I don't understand all their technical terms, but from what I read, I didn't see anything negative. No if, ands, or buts. So I think just that in itself, there's room for recovery and then this on top of it. Now, yeah, this did come out a couple weeks ago, but the chart is looking good. Let me show ya. <laughs> Go ahead and tighten up your saddles, kids. We're hitting the trail. <laughs> this is UBX, Unity Biotechnologies, and we're doing all of our charting on Think or Swim. You get this free just by signing up with TD Ameritrade. Now, we're looking at a six-month, four-hour view for this stock. Six months ago, we had a high of $6.80, and in April, we hit a low of $1.46. Now, when she fell here, she came down to this area and created a very strong support, sitting here for almost a month and a half. And then she broke it here, and right now, we have come back to it. Now, it is that big fall right there that interests me the most. This is March 27th. She fell from $4.15 down to a buck 92 and then she trickled down to a buck 46 now what she's been doing is just waiting she's biding time she has no strength to climb and chase these smas so she's waiting for these smas to come down to her right here as soon as that 20 got close boop, she jumped over it once the 50 got close boop, she jumped over it here comes our support boop, boop. she's trying to get over it she got over it right there <laughs> and now she's going for that 200. Our oscillators look good. Our PPO and our MACD are both climbing, pushing up. RSI is clear up at 63. The only thing missing here is volume. We don't have any. She dropped hard today, right? From 637,000 down to 179,000. So bring us some volume, please. 20 day, one hour view. Wow. Look at that angle on a 200 day SMA don't normally see that on the 200 she normally just curves so we had a big strong furious bounce here when she broke that support and she was testing that support over and over again then fell back down to her 200 but she's working it now folks look she is bouncing off the 200 right there then she jumped up to her 50 now she's bouncing off of the 50 then she graduated. Here's a couple taps onto the 20 before she said bye-bye to that. Now she's floating on the nine-day SMA. Hit a high right here, pulled back, and went back to climbing. This all looks good. Our oscillators, oh, the PPO is cooled off. It's going sideways. Our MACD is still above the line with a slight dip, and our RSI is climbing. Everything looks standard. I can live with it. Five-day, five-minute. Oh, that's beautiful. Low bubble in this corner, $2.11. There's that high she hit before she fell, $2.58. She came right down near our support, but she's so light, she didn't have to bounce off of it. She just floated back up, crossed over her 50, crossed over her 20, and she's come back down right now. It looks like she's at around 253, but this is looking promising, folks. Honestly, I don't see any reason for her to have fallen that far in the first place. I think people misread that as I pointed out. And I think there's a huge recovery possibility just looking at that. Let me go back to that four hour view. So we are looking there. If she gets back up to there, that is $4.12. We are down here at $2.53. She is breaking the support she's about ready to break this and when people figure this out i think she's going to run folks now we're not just talking all of this happening in a day you may have to ride it uphill but you can see she has potential she has promise she's got good phase trials and there was no reason for that drop but there's more to know as always so do your own due diligence don't just trust my word trust your own remember the more you know the more you're going to grow See ya.